왜요? I Singapore. I can speak Korea. 안녕하세요. 감사합니다. 사랑해요. Film director and screenwriter Shuming Her premiered his debut feature film Ajuma at the 27th Busan International Film Festival and was nominated across four categories at the 59th Golden Horse Awards, including Best New Director. Shuming Her, thank you so much and welcome to the For Your Reference podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I think I need to thank you. You brought so much joy in this film and I'm very excited to talk about it with you today. I think the best way to get started is how did this idea come about? You know, it's exactly what the synopsis is. It brings so much fun and joy. Where did it, where did it all come about? Uh, so when I was living in LA uh, about 10 years ago, I was studying, uh, doing my graduate studies at the American Film Institute, uh, doing my master's in directing. So at that point in my life, I was living away from Singapore and Los Angeles mm -hmm. and um, and do a lot of, I do a lot of Skype, um, catch up with my mom. And at that point, um, I realized my mom's obsession with Korean drama was pretty interesting to me like we would chat and she's always sort of going off about you know whatever drama that she's watching yeah. just really giving me the breakdown of what's happening and at some point I'm not listening and I thought she was talking about you know my aunt or some, someone yeah. in her life and I realized like no, she's who dramatically recapping. got hit by a car yeah. <laughs> it's like oh you're recapping a Korean drama so um I think at that point it allowed me to assess our relationship as mother and son and you know she's getting older and I'm at mm -hmm. a point in my life where um you know I'm trying to carve out something for myself and and I think for her it's been so much of that sacrifice um, of a mother who has given everything to a family and and for the first time her kids are all grown up she has to for the first time she can think about herself um, and and she never thought it would be possible so I think it was really the genesis of the film came from that and 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 I think it was just sort of fun to when I tell people this is a film about a Singaporean auntie who who is obsessed with Korean drama. She gets yeah. lost in Korea. It's it's a fun premise, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, you know, when I pitch it. So uh, that's how we ended up making it. Um, we shot it last year. Yeah, um, there's definitely a K-wave. And if it's not the aunties, maybe it's ourselves um, mm -hmm. that are definitely riding the wave as well. The dynamics between mother and son was definitely something I wanted to talk about. So mm -hmm. um, if we can talk about it now, it's... I think the best ways to experience and to write film is from experience. And you talk about that as well. And, you know, wanting to connect, the only way to connect and using that time to talk about, I guess, storylines in a Korean drama. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of um, how we process, um, I think our obsession with melodrama, with soap opera, with, yeah. with, with, with all of that, um, I think sometimes insight kind of brings out a certain emotion that we never thought would, you know, are, are deep down inside for us. And mm -hmm. I think it's the same way for the auntie in the film where she sees or connects something in her life um, with the drama that she has been watching. Um, and sometimes we find like maybe as filmmakers, we always feel like, oh, we, you know, soap opera and, 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 and all of that are, are cheap emotions. But I, I don't agree. I think sometimes it brings out something deeper in us that we don't know how to process. And and I think through that, I, I see, I think as as even as at home, when I see my mom watching these drama and connecting with her through the things that she watched, mm -hmm. um, a lot of us to get closer or at least understand what she's um, going through, you know, yeah. emotionally. Um, so I wanted to present that in the film as well, that kind of relationship um, that can be, that may be a bit of a distance, I think, and, and then you see a bit of the change at the end. Yeah, yeah. The, it, there's definitely moments of reflection because with the son, I'm like, oh, you need to do better. And I'm like, oh, I need to do better as a daughter as well. So yeah. <laughs> it was that, you know, sort of bringing and coming together as well. Um, another theme that I I really love and I really resonated with 
was the grief, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's explored through auntie or whether it's explored through, you know, not spoiling, but through other characters as well. You're, it's, it's pretty much what you're saying. There's so much light and shade and, you know, bringing able to bring all different sort of tones into this film. Mm -hmm. One moment we're in some sort of hijinks and we're trying to understand each other in a car. And in other moments, we're feeling very somber and, you know, trying to figure out as auntie, where do we go next? Yeah. Yeah. I think um, that, that kind of, there's a certain fun to uh, the kind of it, what's happening in real life in the film. Yeah. I remember there are times when I'm kind of thinking, oh, but that's not really, maybe it's a little romanticized, mm -hmm. almost like a Korean drama. So it was really about um, balancing the line between reality and what you watch or, you know, the melodrama and something that, something that's a bit more realist. Um, but at the end of the day, I feel like um, this is a film that is, that I try not to take too much, take myself too seriously with it also. Yeah. You know, and, and and at least even when we filmed it and we were, you know, rehearsing and 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 workshopping it with the cast and crew, um, I, I this was right towards the end of the pandemic also because so everyone's kind of back at work for the first time in a while. So it was it was a brief to my cast and crew about like let's have fun, let's let's mm. just you know, um, I think that's what sometimes we need now is is something a little light and 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 and. I feel like the energy would then show on the film itself. Um, so at least that was the the um, feeling behind the make the making of this film. But also for me, I I think when I was making it, it was also thinking about um, having a root or having something that connect every single person that worked on the film. And and so with my cast, with my production designer, with my cinematographer, um, everyone, I usually tell them to um, think of what their mom would do in answering, you know, like, oh, how do, what is she going to wear? Like, you know, my, my sometimes my wardrobe would come in and show me um, wardrobe of, of what auntie would wear. And I kind of go like, what would your mom wear? You know, so using that as a way um, to connect to the character and what the story really is about, and even for Hui Fang, Hong Hui Fang, the actress who played Auntie, so she um, came in with a lot of her own life experience as a mother, as a daughter, as a sister, yeah. um, but also, of, of course, as 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 um, you know, her many years of experience working as an actress. So a lot of that combined into who this woman is, someone that I think we all recognize. Yeah. So it's not just like one person, but it it it's 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 a rep she is a representation of many women in our lives. A lot of aunties that we know. Um and and so I think there is a bit of resonance to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's an exciting time, um, especially someone that loves films, because there's so much texture in storylines, you know. Mm -hmm. It can be super fun and it can also be, you know, really talking to true stories. We can we can essentially be crying and laughing at the same time. And that's absolutely um, what this film does for me anyway. Yeah, I think it was very much there are scenes where i i remember when we were we were right when i was writing it when we were shooting it and editing it um and i would kind of go i want the audience to at this moment laugh yeah and then in the next 20 seconds i, I would want you to feel a sense of melancholy and, and 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 maybe cry so it's a quick switch but it's a tricky thing to do and, and i think a lot of I thought the actors did um, an amazing job trying to kind of straddle that and 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 figure out um, how to do that. And this one particular scene, not to spoil it, well, it's in a car, and I mean, you might know which scene I'm talking about. But um, it 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 was a moment that if you watch it from the beginning of the film when she said something, and then it happened, and then she said it again, that you don't expect it to come. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a certain sense of laughter to that but then in the next 10 seconds you would feel like oh my god this is this is i didn't expect to cry so um yeah. so i'm hoping that would succeed <laughs> succeed 
But that's, I think that's the beauty of life and, you know, mm-hmm. not not hiding from that um, was definitely an ajama and I absolutely loved it. And speaking of triumphant moments, the final scene in this film, I was just like, tears. I was like, this is beautiful, it's happy and it's glorious, but I'm like, I'm feeling everything I need to feel. Um, and this kind of comes into um, the music and also the score in the yeah. film. It was done so... It was, so, it was done so beautifully, you know. Thank sometimes you. it can feel like a playlist. Sometimes it can feel disjointed, but it just wove together so beautifully. Mm. I'd love to hear about the process of picking music mm. and the score inside of this film. Yeah. So uh, the film obviously is is bookmarked, or not bookmarked, but um, um, what do you call it? It's it's bookended. It's, yeah, bookended. Yeah, bookended by this one song. Mm-hmm. in the film and if you are a fan a historian of k-pop um you would probably recognize the song and and so i've always wanted this song to um it's always been in the first draft that this song was sort of open and close um the film and it's very important to auntie in some ways and i wanted the film to have a bit of resonance to it yeah. and i went we went through a whole long list of, of music and then at some point um the song choice came from my line the line dancing instructor that we worked with, uh, who is also in the film, because um, all the line dancing ladies and aunties are part of a group that that meets every every week, yeah. um, and so they and I ask her like, do you have do you guys dance to Korean songs and and if there's can you send me some of the you know choreography and, and songs that you have, and she said oh we always dance to this this is a really good song to dance to, so she sent it to me and I've re- re- kind of recognized it. Um, and I looked at the lyrics, um, and I thought, this is perfect. This is, this is a very empowering song. Um, but I also made a conscious effort to not, especially if you don't speak Korean, yeah. um, you wouldn't understand the meaning of the song until the end. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, and it sort of bookmarks the, uh, the film, punctuates the film in some ways, mm-hmm. um, so that you recognize it and it's 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 a bop i mean it's 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 you can't run away from it yeah. um the soundtrack itself i felt it was it was a fantastic collaboration i had with my composer suhao so he i think when we worked together on on the score it was very much about okay how can this moment be sort of elevated with the music um it it has a sense of of magic to it, but also not too sentimental. So it's it was it was I don't want to make it such that it's it's overpowering the film. It, it just enhances it a little bit, um, but also creating a sort of texture. I think where it it elevates this idea or the tone of Korean drama, and I think Korean drama some, sometimes have this certain tone of romanticism and 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 that sort of feel to it so i i wanted to have that and and i also wanted that that um a ballad a k-pop ballad so we worked with um uh independent singer who lived in uh in the u.s she's a korean american singer Mm -hmm. and and she wrote the song so I, i said i wanted the um this is the premise of the film of well not the film premise of the drama in the film yeah can you write something that um, could could be um, kind of connected to the story, but also to 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 not just to the drama, but to the the film itself? Mm-hmm. Um, so she wrote this beautiful ballad, which when I first heard it, I was like, I thought it was an existing song. It's just like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> no, I I wrote it, and and it was it was perfect. It was I thought it was. Um, so we also kind of used that tone to kind of you know make it a, a sort of mark to the film itself, um, music-wise. Mm-hmm. So, um, and, and li- little things you hear, even choices of sound design and the music you hear in a restaurant and all of yeah. those things, re- it's really to kind of create this texture that of what Seoul is, what Korea is, um, and, and how much of... of, of um, how instantly you recognize that this is... Seoul and this is Korea. Yeah. Because of 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 the music, because of of the the um the achievement that they have had in terms of um uh pop culture. I mm-hmm. think um that was very featured prominently in the film. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very grounded, hopeful joy, I think, 
that yeah. was through the music as well as through the film. And, you know, even talking about um, creating the creativity is gorgeous. The same way watching this film, like you never know what you're going to get out of it and what you brought to this film really, I think, will make everyone feel everything they need to feel, um, which is a beautiful thing. Um, before I get to the last question, I just wanted to quickly talk about, um, you know, so I'm Tongan, I'm from the Pacific Islands, so, mm. but even I could tell there were moments where the language was changing. So we have cultures, we have different characters that are Singaporean, that are Chinese, that are also Korean as well. And I kind of want to talk about the sort of balance or how fun it was perhaps to have the melding of those worlds. Mm. Um, yeah, I, that's a good point because coming from Singapore where we are very multicultural, mm -hmm. um, but there are also certain influence of the things we watch and the things we listen to. Um, it's, it's incredibly diverse. So I grew up watching, you know, Hong Kong films, um, Hollywood films, uh, um, British movies or television, and all of those things have always been, and also Singaporean um, yeah. production. So um, I think language for me, it was important for me to kind of, uh, um, and because I don't speak Korean, mm -hmm. um, it was very important for me to kind of understand that what's being said with, from the actors or even just crafting certain scenes are authentic to the experience. Um, and I'm very aware that um, uh, at, at the end of the day, I a lot of the scenes, I'm writing it as an outsider. I'm not Korean. So it, it was very important for me. My It was my responsibility to make sure that I'm portraying um, a society that is truthful to the yeah. people. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a lot of research, but also a lot of working with my Korean colleagues to create, like, make sure that does this does this make sense? You know, does this sort of um, and and they would tell me, and they're very helpful in the sense they know what I'm trying to say, but they would yeah. tell me the specificity. It's not super. Um, um, uh, local like what well, I would suggest maybe doing this um, and and then so we will make certain adjustments to to things like as simple as props or as simple as or, or as complex as um, um, how the scene is devised mm -hmm. so it was really to make sure that um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm as authentic as I can be to the story um, and just the mer merging of the language itself um, it was also something that was very important to me that from a Singaporean context, mm -hmm. uh, there are certain things that she says, that, which is very Singaporean. So, wow. and I, I noticed that I've been traveling with the film around the world um, and even in Singapore. In Singapore, there's one moment, which is very simple, where the audience would always laugh and react to it. And it's just, it's just her saying, thank you. <laughs> and and they just everyone would always laugh because it's and they they and someone said this because how this how I am our aunts and our moms say thank you yeah like the the aunties you see on the street you know the way they say it that's just how they say it because it's and it sounds you know it sounds cute and it sounds but it sounds only only Singaporeans would get it so yeah. obviously I don't get that reaction in in anywhere else in the world like it's always quite silent or they yeah. maybe it's a smile um the other things that wherever we go i think the 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 moment where uh they have to speak in english in mm -hmm. in um with the security guard so that moment was was also something universally i think people react to it because they recognize how um, sometimes comedy ensues with with when when they don't speak the same language and that's yeah. trying to communicate. So, and he said he could speak Chinese, and I'm like, well, I can, can speak, speak Chinese. <laughs> everyone can speak Chinese, <laughs> yeah. and, and it's just one word. You know, and it's just hello. Yeah. So so um so there are little things like that that I feel like um connects the audience in some ways where mm -hmm. where um you might necessarily you not, might not understand the language, but after a while. The beauty of it is that you you kind of get a sense of these are the little nuances that 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 um uh makes you feel at home or familiar. Yeah, yeah. especially because if you know, you know it just hits different, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, well, let's finish off with the last question. Um, we finish off our reviews with a recommendation. So what would you pair with Ajma as a double feature? Uh, one of the film I really, uh, I saw and I know it's play. I'm, I'm actually meeting him on Friday for lunch. Uh, Anthony Shim's Boy's Boy, Rise Boy Sleeps, um, ah. which is the Canadian, Canadian, Korean, uh, uh, Korean, Canadian feature. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was also that also premiered in Busan. Um, it is a story about a um, Korean immigrant, a uh, single mother who moved to Canada with a child, um, and sort of um, it's a beautiful film with a beautiful soundtrack and a and really grounded uh, performance from the lead actress. Um, I we, we I watched it for the first time in in Jeddah at the Red Sea International Film Festival, mm -hmm. um, and they watched my film there also. And then we realized in both films, there's one moment where we had the exact same line. Love it. Um, where when I watched it, I remember when I watched it. I was like, oh my god, I have that line, the same moment <laughs> in my film. And then, but in a completely different context, mm -hmm. but but. It, it sort of we found it so funny because we were like it's it's um this one moment it's obviously tonally and all of that they're completely different um um but i thought um it's, i think it's a beautiful film um that that i highly recommend um uh audience at the film festival to go watch it's it's yeah. and, and of course come watch my film which is um playing this weekend I think that's one of we we um have a handful of filmmakers that we've interviewed, and I think that's one of my favorite responses. Like the intersection of two films with the same line, I love it. So yeah, yeah, it was, it was so lovely chatting with you, Shuming. I really, really thank enjoyed you so it. much. Thank it you for a, a gorgeous film. Thank you for your time. Thank you.